Okay. Um, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to SOAS and welcome to the School of Languages, Cultures and Linguistics, which is the department that I am from. Uh, I would like to also introduce my colleague, uh, Naresh Sharma. Uh, you want to say hello, Naresh, quickly? Hi there. Yes, um, I'm Naresh Sharma and I'm senior lecturer in Hindi and Urdu, and I'm here on behalf of the South Asia section. And yeah, apologies again to everyone. There were some technical problems with uh, logging on this morning, I believe. And yeah, good to see you. Thank you. Um, uh, so um, my name is Dana Healy, and I am going to be introducing to you two programs that are based in uh, the School of uh, Languages, Cultures and Linguistics, and that's MA Southeast Asian and Pacific Asian Studies program. And I will also briefly introduce MA South Asian Studies, and then my colleague Naresh Sharma can obviously give you more specific information. Uh, I'm also going to be introducing uh, two versions of uh, these programs, and that's a version with an intensive language. So MA Southeast Asian Studies and Intensive Language, and MA South Asian Studies and Intensive Language. It may be actually quite um, useful for me to know um, how many of you are interested in the Southeast Asia part and who is interested in the South Asia part. So if you can use the chat function and just simply uh, note which program you are interested in, then that may actually be uh, helpful so that we know how many people are uh, here for each program. But I will uh, talk um, slightly more generally, first of all. Um, so these two programs I am talking about, they are what we call area studies programs. So they are uh, programs that focus on a study of a specific region. Uh, and you combine this study with a disciplinary focus. All area studies programs at SOAS are also um, linked to the study of language. So you have to study a language because the whole sort of foundation of SOAS is uh, based on the belief that obviously nothing can match the engagement with a particular region than that done through the language of that region. This is obviously very important, especially in, in recent times when SOAS and other universities are trying to decolonize uh, its curriculum. Uh, we have been doing that for years. We have been really going into the region, taking regional sources, and these regional sources then inform what we do. Now, uh, if you suggest, uh, if you select South Asia or Southeast Asia, then obviously you then have to uh, sort of decide which will be your disciplinary focus. And uh, I have listed uh, some of the disciplines that are available at SOAS. Uh, in most cases, you know, the combinations are really possible. There may be some sort of specific um, exceptions, but you can combine or focus uh, uh, these uh, area studies programs on anthropology, art and archaeology, uh, media and cinema studies, uh, economics, politics, development studies, history, law, uh, study of religion. So essentially, if you look at the list of all the departments around SOAS, in most cases, all these disciplines represented by each department can be combined with the area studies program. So the basic structure of, of our area studies programs is that you do uh, 60 credits, of a dissertation. So that's the sort of ultimate goal of your MA program. You write a 10,000 word dissertation. But before you uh, start writing it, you are attending taught modules and you have to pass 120 credits of taught modules. Uh, what normally happens is in term one and in term two, you obviously focus on your um, on attending the taught modules, passing all assessments, exams, et cetera. And then once you finish, uh, you then start really writing up your dissertation. So really in time three, and then during the summer and the submission date for the dissertations is always early September, uh, broadly speaking. Uh, 
Uh, if you were interested in the version with an intensive language, then you will need to take 315 credits in total. The dissertation remains the same, so again, 60 credits. And then you would have to do 255 credits um, of taught modules. 45 of these credits would be actually done abroad because the intensive uh, language version of these programs obviously incorporates a period of study abroad, summer abroad. It's a program which has to be done over two years. And uh, in the summer between the two years, you go abroad and you have a very intensive um, immersion uh, in the study of the language uh, in different countries. So that, that is the basic structure. And then obviously when you apply uh, and when you join uh, these programs, you will then have to actually specify which of these modules available you are going to take and how you are going to put together the credits. Um, what we have done in recent years is we are gradually introducing what we call a guided curriculum which means that all of our programs, undergraduate and postgraduate, are slightly more structured. Um, so you usually start with some core compulsory modules, and only then you have the sort of you know, options to choose your uh, modules that interest you. If you are going to apply uh, for these programs, you will be asked to create a personal statement uh, and uh, that really is a very important piece uh, of information you provide us because uh, in your personal statement, you will um, introduce to us what are your interests, what is the focus of your study you intend to do at SOAS. Um, and that leads me to the point which you can see at the bottom of the screen. You will really need to identify one of the sort of disciplines, one of the taught modules as your major. The, uh, the, the designation of a major module is slightly sort of fluid, but essentially what it means that you should be then uh, doing your dissertation research uh, linked to that particular major module. Um, it's not set in stone because obviously many of our students who come uh, they have certain intentions, certain plans, but then they start attending taught modules. Maybe their interests shift slightly or the more general um, uh, research they were proposing will um, uh, uh, later obviously slightly uh, change so they can modify it. So it doesn't mean that if you actually, you know, designate something at the beginning as your ma major module that you cannot expand it or somehow modify it. But broadly speaking, you know, if you are coming to do area studies program uh, in South and Southeast Asian studies, then you probably already know that you want to focus more on the art and archeology span or on uh, politics and development studies. So that's the sort of uh, decision you have to probably take already when you are applying to SOAS. So here I have sort of listed uh, the sort of basic structure of uh, MA Southeast and Pacific Asian studies, but the structure is uh, very similar for the South Asian studies option. So you have the dissertation and then you have the sort of components. So you, you take a language, uh, 30 credits of language in year one, uh, and then uh, you make up the rest with uh, the sort of specialized uh, disciplinary modules. And from uh, next year, so that's presumably when you would be joining us, we have introduced a new core module that is going to be taught to all area studies programs taught in our department. Um, and that module is called Remapping Area Studies in Asia, Africa, and the Middle East. I think I have some information on it. Let me just jump slightly. So, so this is this module, and, and this is essentially a sort of theoretical introduction to the study of uh, uh, Asia, Africa, and the Middle East, the area studies approach. Um, so it's sort of module which considers issues of what it means to do, you know, to study a particular region, uh, 
how does the region relate to the global, how does the uh, region relate to the Western, um, how has the area studies uh, evolved and changed uh, as a result of the sort of globalizing um, developments all over the world, etc. cetera. So, so it simply forces you to somehow engage uh, with the region um, in a slightly theoretical, philosophical way, you are sort of made to consider the sort of global issues, general issues that you will then obviously face when you study a specific particular region. So we don't study the region in complete isolation. Of course, you, you need to consider the sort of the globe as well. So I go just uh, back to the presentation. So this is a sample of, uh, of, of the year, one year program, MA Southeast and Pacific Asian Studies. Uh, the second uh, sample structure I have here, as you can see, this is um, a sample structure of a, a version with the intensive language. So a two year full-time study. Um, and as you can see, you sort of really divide uh, all the credits between two years. Here you have the uh, compulsory core module I just introduced, remapping area studies. Then you have the language options, and then you have the uh, uh, other options from the sort of disciplinary uh, themes. Then you obviously go for your summer abroad. You come back, you continue with the study of a language. Uh, you then also have uh, 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 credits available to uh, focus on the disciplinary subjects. And obviously you then complete your dissertation. So this is the sort of basic structure. This information is online. So please, you know, if you are interested, then uh, look at it in more detail. The disciplinary options, the modules that you can actually select to make up the sort of 60 credits and et cetera. Um, if you go to our online uh, section for these programs, you have actually a list of the various modules that are linked to Southeast Asia taught around SOAS and uh, in the various di uh, discipline departments. Um, just to say that obviously, you know, we are constantly sort of uh, updating, updating our uh, syllabus which means that uh, you know, new modules are being created in, around SOAS. Um, and we obviously always try to make sure that uh, the list of options is updated, amended. Certain modules obviously cease to exist. Uh, so you know, the, the list of options is something you would have to have a look at um, before you know, taking a decision. I should probably at this stage also say that uh, you can study all of these programs either full time or you can obviously study them part time. Uh, the, the one year MA Southeast Asian, South, Southeast and Pacific Asian Studies uh, program and MA South Asian Studies programs, you can study them over two years if you want. Um, we also allow uh, you to study them over three years. This is obviously particularly beneficial to those of you who want to study while working. And uh, the question I often get asked is, um, you know, how, how is it divided? You know, is the division between the three years done arbitrarily? You, you sort of are told what to do. Uh, it is entirely up to you. So if, for example, you know that one year you are more busy, you can just take uh, fewer modules your credits, you can then make it up next year. So what we obviously are concerned with is that at the end of the study, you obviously have completed all the uh, credits necessary. Another question I get often asked is about, um, you know, the timetabling for these programs and whether it is possible to, for example, commit to just one day of study or one day of uh, coming to SOAS. And this is something which obviously I cannot really guarantee. I cannot give you any uh, precise answer. It uh, really depends on how the modules you select are actually timetabled. Normally we um, 
publish a timetable or at least a draft timetable for the following year around, let's say early May, late April, early May. So if you were to apply um, from uh, September, 2022, and if these issues of how many times a week you would have to come to SOAS are significant, significant for your decision, then please get back in touch with us, email me or my colleagues. And once we have the draft timetable, we can you know, see how the modules you would have uh, wanted to study, how, how the timetable would work for you or not. So for that, please, I cannot really give you a more specific advice now. Okay. Um, so I have already mentioned that the, our uh, area studies programs are based, uh, require that you take a language as one of your options. Um, we have a huge expertise. Uh, uh, SOAS is really the uh, main university in the UK, which offers the largest uh, selection of uh, modules on, in languages of Asia, Africa, and the Middle East. Uh, we have additional expertise. There are many other languages that we actually don't teach, but we obviously have experts, so we research them or they can be actually incorporated into your dissertation if, if you need it to. Many of our uh, colleagues wrote uh, textbooks and, and linguistic studies, so uh, we really have a very long history of engaging with uh, languages. Um, so here are some of the languages that we currently offer. So for Southeast Asia, we offer Indonesian, Vietnamese, Burmese, and Thai. But for next year, we will only run Indonesian and Vietnamese. For South Asia, we have Hindi, Sanskrit, Urdu, Bengali. Uh, I can definitely confirm that we will teach Hindi and Sanskrit. Uh, I, at the moment, cannot confirm if we will teach Bengali, Urdu. Prakrit is usually offered every year because we have external funding and the language program in Prakrit is sponsored by donors. Um, I will then uh, obviously ask my colleague Naresh Sharma to tell you a little bit more. Um, if you opted for the MA Southeast and Pacific Asian Studies program, then for the Pacific Asian studies part, uh, you would be able to study Chinese, Japanese, or Korean. And if you were to take the intensive language version um, with MA South Asian studies, then that can also be combined with Persian, Turkish, and Swahili. So we really have a wide choice. Um, obviously, we, we often get students who are not complete beginners in these languages. Uh, and it is possible to start from a level two, for example, language module. What we would normally do is we would sort of test you and determine if you can actually join the uh, upper level of a language class. Uh, so it is possible to join with an existing knowledge um, of a language. The uh, summer abroad, so the period of study abroad, um, we cooperate obviously with regional universities and I have listed some of the places where our students go. Um, so as you can see, you have uh, for Hindi, we usually send our students to Jaipur for Indonesian, Bandung or Jogjakarta. Uh, Poon is Sanskrit, Lakno, Urdu, Vietnamese. We uh, can send our students either to Ho Chi Minh City or to Hanoi, depending on their preferences. Uh, strictly speaking, it would be also possible to somehow divide uh, your period of study abroad between two places. Uh, that would have to be obviously discussed and uh, agreed on an in individual basis. Of course, the last two years, our uh, study abroad programs have been uh, disrupted by COVID. Um, so some of our students were not able to go. Some uh, period of study abroad happened actually um, through distance learning online. 
but we are very hopeful. We are very hopeful that you know our students will be able to uh, go abroad this uh, summer, and that the following academic year, uh, you know, will not be disrupted. Uh, what else do I need to tell you? I think I have said all the main sort of formal um, aspects. Uh, yes, I wanted to also slightly introduce, um, you know, so us. Uh, we, as I said, we, we are uh, an institution that specializes in the study of Asia, Africa and the Middle East. We have a very uh, long history of engaging with these regions. And we have also uh, enormous resources to support the study of these regions. Uh, we have a beautiful, uh, incredibly richly stocked uh, uh, library, which is one of the national research libraries uh, of Great Britain. Um, we cooperate with libraries in the region, so we obviously collect uh, resources. We work very closely with the British Library, which obviously those of you who know London, you know that we are relatively uh, close uh, to each other. Um, so uh, the cooperation is very, very useful. Um, we also obviously uh, are very close to the British Museum. Uh, we have many other sort of institutions that are linked to the regions such as the Royal Asiatic Society and similar institutions. So all these institutions, you know, we work with, uh, we uh, organize a series of seminars, talks, co various corporations and exchanges. So all that would be available to you uh, should you decide to come to SOAS. Um, inside SOAS, we also have regional centers. So we have a center for Southeast Asian studies and we actually have a South Asia Institute. Um, these sort of centers are really um, uh, focusing on sort of, you know, facilitating uh, exchanges uh, on um, uh, the particular region. So we organize talks, we have seminar series. Uh, our students are obviously asked and encouraged to attend. Um, there are usually weekly seminars. Uh, obviously, this is just the regional centers which are sort of linked to the School of Languages, Cultures and Linguistics, but each disciplinary department has also its own disciplinary center and they also have a, a range of seminars. So on a typical day when you are at SOAS in the late afternoon, you would have enormous uh, number of opportunities to network, uh, go to lectures, workshops, etc. So we obviously always encourage our students to get uh, involved as much as possible. Uh, another uh, issue that perhaps you are interested in, it's the career uh, destinations of our um, uh, graduates, postgraduate students. Uh, we have a really very, very varied profile of students who come to us and their uh, careers. Um, so it's very difficult for me to give you a very typical um, uh, example, uh, because even uh, uh, students who come to us, they already come with different experiences. Some come straight from uh, finishing their first degree, others have traveled or lived in the region, maybe they worked for a charity or some NGO, um, they were involved in some projects and, and uh, after spending a period of time in the region, they want to you know, somehow gain more formal education um, in, in that region. So certainly we have students who want to uh, teach, we had many students who go to the foreign office, um, uh, and civil service in general, journalism or publishing editors. Uh, we have students who set up their own publishing house, for example, just to give you an example. Of course, the NGO sector is a very popular destination for our graduates. Um, those who do um, art, archaeology or religious studies very often you know, work in the area broadly uh, linked to the sort of heritage and, and various museums and 
similar institutions. But also we have students who simply uh, go to somewhere, you know, which is not obviously linked to the modules they took, but they actually go and work in businesses. Um, uh, they, they may be accountants or they may be regional experts um, for a particular business. Um, we obviously have many students who then continue and join various graduate training schemes. And also there is a um, group of students who obviously are keen to um, explore uh, the, the knowledge of the region further and then they would go further to do further studies uh, um, and ultimately to enroll in MPhil and PhD programs. Um, so it really is sort of a varied uh, range of careers. Um, I think it is very important to realize that, uh, you know, the skills our students learn uh, are really the sort of typical transferable skills that you uh, gain from being at uh, doing a, a master's program. But um, the fact that they specialize in something which is more niche, more unique, more uh, unusual, is usually a very useful uh, qualification for them. It opens up more doors because, you know, potential employers are actually quite impressed by the fact that you did something slightly different, that you engaged with a region which is not, you know, uh, so sort of mainstream and so broadly studied. So um, I always give an example of one of my students who took, um, who was very much interested in Vietnam and I, I, my expertise is in Vietnamese studies and he actually was interested in the cultural studies of Vietnam. So taking modules in Vietnamese cinema or Vietnamese literature. And then he actually uh, went to work for a very famous global um, business company. And he used to tell me how the very long interviewing process for the job actually um, involved a lot of talking about, you know, Vietnamese literature or culture that uh, he was able to actually, you know, use this knowledge uh, to impress uh, his uh, interview the interviewing panel and actually show that you know he possessed a very uh, unique skill set. Uh, so uh, I think I will stop and what I will do uh, is I will ask my colleague Naresh Sharma to perhaps you know uh, add what I might have forgotten and, and talk a little bit uh, about South Asian studies and I will check the chat in the meantime and uh, see if I can answer any questions. So, thank you. Thank you, Dana. Um, <clears throat> and welcome again, everyone. Yes, as Dana mentioned, if there are any questions, please do add them in the chat. And um, yes, thanks, thanks for the talk, Dana. I think um, Dana has actually covered everything in, um, you know, there isn't really anything for me to add, um, you've got an idea of the structure of the degree um, and the types of modules that we cover, the languages that are taught, the um, locations where the summer abroad might take place, and also um, a little bit about the dissertation Dana has mentioned, and then, you know, ultimately career paths of students that um, take our MA programs. So, um, if, if anything, I can just mention something again about the languages because that's that's my expertise. I teach Hindi, Urdu and Punjabi. And um, so if you are taking the one year degree, you might take one of those languages if you're taking the South Asian um, studies degree. Or alternatively, we have Bengali. Um, students also take Arabic or Persian or even Swahili. And then um, if you take the two year option, Again, um, students would normally take Hindi, Urdu or Sanskrit with the, um, the summer abroad taking place at one of the locations in India with our partner institution over there. And um, yeah, so there isn't really anything for me to add because uh, your, your talk, Dana, was pretty comprehensive. And so if there are any specific questions, then please do let us know. 
And um, also do, do just add in the chat if you're specifically interested in South Asia um, studies or Southeast Asia and um, the Pacific region. That would be good for us to know. Yes. Um, and also, yeah, any questions, please let us know. Yes, please. If you have questions, I, I hope that you can actually speak to us, uh, that you have access to activate your mic and just ask, or obviously you can put the question in the chat. So please, any questions, anything we have not covered? Um, I may can have a question because I do have students ask me because they're interested about the South um, Asia study and intensive language. So they, they're interested to study Hindi and Sanskrit. So whether they can choose like both language in this program, um, is that okay? Yeah. Dana, maybe you could just confirm the structure whether oh. two languages are allowed. Yes, they are allowed, but obviously, uh, you know, we, we have to be sort of uh, satisfied that you can cope um, with, uh, because what, what on the intensive language, you obviously have to have one of your languages as your main language. That will be the main one, but you can then add in the second year another language module. Uh, and yes, we do get students who are real linguists, who really are very passionate about the study of languages. That's the only thing they want to do. And so, yes, formally it's allowed, but obviously this has to be sort of um, approved or discussed on a one-to-one -one basis and by judging the specific sort of um, knowledge you have. Okay, so when they submit the application on their like personal statement, they need to mention um, which the language that they want to study as a main language in the program. So they need to decide when they submit application, right? Yes, because you you yes you need to sort of in on your application you have to designate the language which is going to be the intensive language you are coming to study, and then uh, you can obviously use some of your open credits to take another language. Okay. But usually we don't recommend that a student starts two languages at the same time from yeah. scratch. Yeah. So okay. as Donna mentioned, you might start one in your first year and then take one in your second year. Or if you already have knowledge of, say, for example, Hindi, you might go into Hindi at level two and start a Sanskrit at level one. So you're not at the beginner's level of yeah. both at the same time. Yeah, okay. absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. And any other questions? Perhaps there's one thing which I forgot to ask, and that's when when you need to apply or what is the deadline, etc. I think officially we say that the deadline is the 30th of June of each academic year, but we consider applications even throughout the summer. So if uh, some late application comes in, we, we certainly consider the application. Um, another question which I get asked is if you have to have some, if your first degree had, has to be sort of linked to uh, uh, the area you are proposing to study, which obviously it doesn't have to, you can come to us and select these uh, programs with essentially any background. Um, and also the um, entrance requirements. We obviously uh, require that you have a first degree, uh, ideally uh, two one, but we look at applications that are two two. Um, essentially, we really consider every application because we, uh, from our experience, we have such a variety of applicants, people who are maybe mature students, people who have uh, very unique, uh, personal circumstances, having lived in the region, etc. So we look at uh, all applicants and we, you know, make our decision on each specific application. So even if you are not sure whether you know you have good enough credentials, I think I would encourage you to, you know, either apply or to get in touch with us and ask and check. Um, okay, so nobody is volunteering in, and nobody is saying in the chat uh, which of the programs um, uh, you are interested in. Uh, I suspect that, you know, there will be more have... of you interested in South Asian studies. Yes, pre please. Uh, uh, quick question. Um, yeah, please. Thanks. Uh, you know, um, 
so not for a linguist uh, linguistic student but uh, anyone who's interested in south asia and would like to pick up one of the language modules is it kind of mandatory to uh, travel to india pune wherever you listed or they could still be in london and study uh, that's my question i mean uh, you mean for the for the summer abroad if you wanted to do the uh, yes. well uh, uh, presumably, yes. I mean, at the moment, our program is, uh, you know, the summer abroad is the summer abroad period. So what, what are you thinking? You would not want to go to India or? Is it kind of mandatory or like is it optional? Uh... No, within the MA uh, South Asian and intensive uh, language version, it is compulsory to go to the period of study abroad. Um, I don't know. Of course, you know, we this year, as I said, we had to deal with many special circumstances so you know we consider some mitigating circumstances if somebody really did not want to do go but we would then have to make some alternative arrangements i guess it would have to be some distance learning or online learning so there would have to be very serious reasons um, you know then that we would obviously somehow consider that otherwise the study abroad is compulsory uh, okay. within that program not and, on the MA South Asian studies, mm -hmm. on the one year one. So, Sanyukta, what's your um, interest in, in particular then in terms of the language study that you're keen to oh, no, undertake? Actually, um, yeah, thanks. Uh, I was, uh, I'm, I'm kind of planning to uh, enroll for history of art and architecture, uh, but then uh, I saw one of the modules was also like I could pick up one language. Uh, which could be relevant. Uh, so, yeah. and this is for a one-year degree, yes, or the two-year. So, if it's just the one-year MA that you're taking, the the study abroad is not part of that. It's mm -hmm. only if you're taking the two-year intensive program, which has the summer abroad. So, if you're taking a one-year degree, then you take uh, one language module, and there's no uh, requirement to go abroad. Oh, okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Sorry if I misunderstood what you were actually and, asking. And also some students actually take their one-year MA part-time over two years. And so they might take uh, language level one in the first year of their degree and then language level two in the second year, as long as they get permission from their conveners, if it's allowed within the structure, um, you know, that that can happen as well. Yep. Okay. Um, yeah, any other questions? Um, M. Hussein, I see, do you have your mic on? Did you have a question? I'm not sure. Or maybe you're not connected to the audio. Hello. Ah, yes. Hello. Oh, your, your sound is not coming through. Put your question in the chat. If you have a question, we can try and answer that. And Anyone else have any questions? Please do, you know, raise your hand or, or put your mic on and please ask us or put something in the chat. We, you know, try our best to help to answer. In any case, you know, I want to encourage you to simply get in touch with us in the future because, you know, you got some basic information from us today, but you may have uh, think of more specific, you know, uh, questions later. So uh, our email addresses um, uh, are online, you know, on the website. Uh, we really very much encourage you to get in touch with us because then we can obviously answer any specific queries from you. And I've just added my email address in the chat as well. So if there are any questions about, uh, South Asian languages or the South Asia programs, then please let me know. If I can answer your question directly, I will do. If I don't know the answer, I'll find out and get back to you or put you in touch with uh, someone who can help. If there's a specific question about a particular module, um, then yeah, you know, I can always direct you to the yeah. to the right person. Yeah, that's a very good point because sometimes students obviously see the title of a module. It sounds interesting, but then they actually want to know more. So we can certainly help you, you know, dig deeper beyond the website and find out more information about particular modules. Okay, so 
Okay. Yeah, because today's uh, session is recorded, so um, you can find us uh, this uh, session on YouTube as well. Uh, after several days, we'll upload to YouTube. And uh, thanks everyone, because we need to finish the session like soon, because we have other sessions coming up. And uh, um, well, um, ha happy to meet everyone today. And thanks for Dan and uh, Narish for your <laughs> answer and questions. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. okay, well, thank you all for coming, listening to us and allowing us to introduce our programs to you. So I hope to see you at SOAS at some time in the future. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.